Welcome to the Border Beats Anthology Reading. We're starting with Dane Insey. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, uh, 2023 was uh, pretty busy for me. I published uh, three books, two of uh, two other authors, and one of my own. Uh, Mimi Germans, Where Grasses Bend, and John Angel Grant's um, The Green Notebook, and my book uh, called Destiny Murder. In 2024, I have three books uh, uh, planned to come out. Uh, one of them is by uh, D. Allen called Crimson Stain, and uh, a book by uh, Leslie Constable called uh, uh, House Without Walls, and her husband's book uh, it's in, in Spanish and English called The uh, Nature of Love. And so I will pull up my piece here. And it's called uh, A Del Rio Barbershop, Crossing the Borderline International Social Sexual Child to Man. I learned three chords on the guitar in a barber shop in Del Rio, Texas, E, A, and D. I was a shoeshine boy. I learned how to find Indian mounds from the barber whose name I cannot remember just now. I was innocent. I was 12. One of the regular customers who got a shoe shine almost every time wanted to take me across the border to see a dad Acuna to a whorehouse to, so that I would learn the lessons of being a man. Looking back, I, I wonder now what was up with that? A grown up, huh? Uh, the rain clouds, shadows moving across my face as I contemplate the inside horror of what that experience would be like for me or mean to me. And what about the woman and her life? Is she doing this to feed a house full of kids and a drunk husband, just a chore like a sink full of dirty dishes? joyless cigarette reed thin muscular body the customer could have been an ordinary cowboy top sadist with a hint of pedophile thrown in for grins as luck would have it uh it was i was never to know uh i was never to know and tangle uh my story uh was meant to be wrapped around some sad woman in mexico in the writing of our mutual biography each story told lonely now and forever apart from the other story. At the time, the notion of sexual identity was as far away from my consciousness as any other planet. Now I think, huh, about that man who was always dressed a little too perfectly. I, I remember him as dressed in black and turquoise accents like what they called drugstore cowboys, jeans with sharply ironed creases, smart pressed pearl snap button cowboy shirt like the cowboy musicians wear on the bandstand at the fair there was something there not sure what ordinary or routine terror there was a classmate of mine who dressed in black all the time i followed him into a gas station bathroom he unzipped and dropped to the floor in his black chinos black jacket and black t-shirt he had black hair well, what is this? What is this, a theme, a parade of characters in black costumes? He and I may have had a conversation about jacking off. I may have told him I didn't know how to do it. Being a good-natured kid, he showed me how it was done. There were not any feelings associated with the incident then or now. It seemed distant, academic, and not romantic. He did not touch me, nor I him. I just looked. I see him heap black heap on the beige tiled floor, cum covered cock and me shrugging. Okay, if that's all it is, okay. Voyeurs get off on fetish of looking, but there was no excitement. So that's not my kink. I wonder what it is really. What is my kink? I, I think about it. I think about the time and I think that was about the time I stopped playing the clarinet in the junior high school band. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let's see who we have. 
I have Leonard Lunk up next. I have the pleasure of working off an iPhone for these things. And sometimes the technology looks at me and laughs. And it knows I spent 40 years with mainframe computers, so it gets its vengeance. Anyway, um, what's been happening? My 29th poetry title was released by Kelsey Books about three weeks ago. Uh, and I'll drop a link in the chat. Uh, did my 10th annual fundraiser chat book for uh, St. Baldrick's Children's Cancer Research. And uh, two solo photography exhibits and uh, part of nine group exhibits over the course of the year. So I've been keeping busy, been keeping busy. So soon, too soon. After the 1943 painting, Refugee Thanksgiving by Norman Rockwell. She has not been killed or otherwise bodily injured in the fleeing from her home, finding shelter and freedom elsewhere behind the other line. She is tired, hungry, cold and frightened, and her young soul knows just enough to say, these will hurt as long as you remember. Still, seated in a broken church, she is old enough to keep faith for better days, for years full with love and grace and joy. And so she folds her hands, says an honest prayer of thanks for the simple meal she received, for the overlarge, worn, warm coat, both of these from a stranger without her asking. And laundry. We live between the loyalists and the other loyalists. Both sides in the nameless conflict have their true believers, but we don't count among them, and never have across the ages. I want to raise enough for us, crops and sheep and families, in the green between the shifting dunes of time and politics. My wife's dream is a clothesline, supple rope between trees or posts. She says barbed wire tears our fabric. Thank you all. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Jeff Weddle, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, in the last year-ish, I've had three books come out. Um, most recent, Driving the Lost Highway but from uh, Uncollected Press. Um, eight or nine months before that, how it went to pieces from Kung Fu Treasury Press. And um, the most unexpected and um, and odd in many ways was my uh, selected poems translated into Albanian and published in Kosovo, uh, translated by uh, Fadil Bajraj, who introduced uh, Beat Generation literature to the Albanian speaking world. He plucked me out of nowhere. So here we go. Here's my poem from Border Beats. True, it's called When My Father Left. The nurse woke me and said it was time. Then she left, left me alone in the room with my father, still and silent, as his vital signs diminished. I kept my hand on his chest until she came back 20 minutes later to say he was gone. I didn't say much while we were alone, just that he was a good man, a good dad, and I loved him. When I kissed his head, he was already cold. Okay, um, keeping up a theme of death, I, I, I hadn't planned on reading this poem tonight, but you all mentioned Donna Snyder at the beginning when we were all gathering. And I, I was barely acquainted with Donna. I was on spill words once, but I was deeply saddened when I heard she died. And I wrote a poem for her that's in this book. It's called For Donna Snyder. Even poets die, no matter how they hammer nails into empty space 
or paint bright shadows in dark new corners of what we all knew but didn't know it. Even poets die, and it seems impossible, or at least unlikely. Perhaps it's a joke, because who can take death seriously when everything screams life, and life screams back in blood and sunshine? Poets die. I get that. But something else stays behind. A map of what might still be a memory of cheap wine shared on an expensive afternoon, jazz, chocolate and popcorn, a bloodletting. Even poets die and the best take us along for the ride without even knowing. Some kind of sorcery, I guess, the best and saddest kind. All right, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. Michael Sindler? Michael? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm not as ambitious as some, so I don't have a bunch of books out. Uh, I'm in several anthologies, but none that uh, I'm more proud of being in than this one. Uh, really do appreciate the inclusion very much. And the piece that I put into it, it's called Borders. From the first false line between two encampments, delineating space between us and them, this deadly dualism, this lie invents, divides true nature's family on a whim, enriching one's fortune at a neighbor's expense from the Rio Grande to Jerusalem. Clouds glide free and rivers unencumbered flow, while humans partition ourselves here below. What corrupted logic exists that prevents understanding, leads tribe or state to condemn, to conquer, to take, to wall up or to fence? Senseless descent into divisive mayhem mistaking articles of faith with vestments, although each name of God is a synonym, to keep up pretense, maintain the status quo, the world's held hostage to braggadocio. And um, I thought I would do one more, but um, sort of goes along with the idea um, that I feel very strongly that borders are just ridiculous artificial things that don't really exist and shouldn't be paid attention to. And this one's called ballooning. And it has an epigraph that is, don't despair of this falling world, Jane Hirschfield. It may seem as if our world is but a Fragile, thin, balloon, paper mache over with sticky strips of lies and hate held together by plaster of platitudes. A pin poised ready to pop the thin rubber membrane, leaving only a flimsy, frail rind with no warmth or color behind. But even without the inflated elastic husk, sweet breath of creation remains inside working from within with artistic alchemy, leisure main transformation of rough raw surface, paper and paste metamorph into softer substance, the green breath of life, the clear breath of truth, the prismatic breath of love, curing cellulose orb, warming from within, incubating filaments of newsprint turned to sicken, silken strands of rich moss holding dew, glistening growth with mercurial potential, new natural carpet on which to build better, pulling needed nutrients from inner ether exha exhaled straight from lungs of love, true essence of expansive universe, that which knows no time but now, that which always finds the way to life, that which we must learn to breathe, 
in and out as we lay ourselves across this new formed world ballooning with promise. Okay, thank you all very much. And very much. I just want to mention, uh, it'd be nice if uh, when people aren't reading, if they do keep their mics off. Thank you. Yes, good idea. Eric? Uh, please uh, tell us a little bit what about what you're up to and read your poem, please, from Border Beats. Um, so uh, this is from uh, a current manuscript called Victims of Gravity, um, and uh, it was recently published by the Wax Paper um, out of Chicago. Um, so it's called Love is Not Enough. The Hellion Romantic rarely inhabits a land of practicality. Someone somewhere far away is practicing acceptance by looking at clouds with no expectations. Flamingos go door to door with pamphlets on the dangers of plastic. A blind woman shuffles naked down the street and swings at any noise with a rolled newspaper. This is what the prophet spoke of when entering cities aflame. What beggars mean when laughing it's not physics, but gravity is a calling card. Sometimes the hardest thing is the right thing, she said, through tears, from this distance, ears like seashells. Thank you very much. Thanks for letting me join. Yeah, okay. All righty, let's see who's up in my, looks like I have Susie up next. Thank you so much for including me in Border Beats. I'm in Florida, Beat Florida. This is the poem that is in the book. It's dedicated to the Bubinator. So I'll dedicate this as well. And it's called Border. Who shall sing our many memories of one night concrete, black boots and demons, of strolling in scars and six packs of tall boys, bodies hosting encyclopedic iconography. Who is left among us with our ironic addictions, our steady beds, as we pause some morning and greet always the ancestors? Times oceanic currents tune our ears sometimes listening to vibration is language and we are still of this world our bodies cannot forget our deliberate scars spoke we were res dogs of the schools who heard the lies of love and pain and lived in a refutation of leather, amplified, faster, louder, our hearts, our hands, our feet, the concrete. We were young bodies in black cotton, torn fishnets, vertical hair, thrift store apparitions of lost inheritance, flailing against each other, faster past the faint, a heartbeat on the edge of stroke, a shrieking seizure, a reaching back to the first moment. We turned away from your beige and our bodies were ours. We heard the ancient quickening with our guitars and our drums shamed your machines, but you ate us except those who escaped. The three chord seed shall sing ever to the racing heart, ever feral, ever at an impossible edge between memory and history. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have Monica Gomez up next. Hello all. I'm just a writer like the rest of you. I've spent much of my energy as a singer songwriter, plugging CDs and whatnot. And I take great comfort these days in just posting one of my poems at random, well, not really random, but uh, just posting a poem every Wednesday on Facebook. I figured, what the hell, if what I want is for people to read my work and give me some feedback or just let me know they, they read it, I can't think of a more simple way than that. So anyway, 
this is a long poem that was accepted by Border Beats, and I'm very grateful to be a part of the anthology. So here we go. I, I live in El Paso, Texas. By the way, I was born in Mexico and grew up along the river. Grew up near a river is the title. Grew up near a river, not a constant, confident, roaring Nile or Amazon or Yangtze, but the sometimes pitiful Rio Grande, named for remembered greatness, now temperamental, humbled by whatever's upstream to the point of drying up in frustration, then overflowing in one afternoon's glut of northern rain. This river can be walked across most of the time, or run from as her muddy innards breach low dirt levees and drought-cracked packed earth dams. Grew up near a river that teaches the wisdom mystics seek how to respect thirst and the sorrow that comes with having no control over your own existence. Teaches that you can walk a thousand miles with nothing to lose but what's in your arms, leave your footprints on a river's bare belly at dawn, and sleep on cold concrete that night. Grew up near a river that's barely a river, until she must be crossed. If not in a running crouch under a thumbnail desert moon, then under high intensity lights along screaming hot highways where the river's been choked into concrete channels and barbed wire, where there's no place to hide. She's exposed like a naked patient in a brilliant surgical suite. She has no choice. Her current reduced to what's permitted by the people in power and those flowing across her path in a perpendicular bipedal blur, carrying babies and blankets woven bulging red green and yellow bags battered suitcases and tightly clutched purses or driving exhaust spewing cars that idle for hours in long lines as agents are tugged tugged along by eager dogs sniffing door panels and suspicious sidewalls or shifting into a dozen gears to get a dilapidated semi with a heavy load over the hump of an international bridge where First Amendment rights are suspended like the brown particulate pall on the horizon. Here, where paperwork rules, if you want to cross this intersection, it's all dotted I's and crossed T's. Otherwise, get out of line and go back. The river has no choice. Who are you to think you can move ahead with ease? Go about your life as though you determine your own path. Grew up near a river where millions trudge over her tightly corseted crossings, but above and below she spreads out on the land best she can. Wherever her lazy swirls between banks, lush with gray-green salt cedar and tender willows sucking at her fertile edges, aren't yet a dead memory buried by earth movers, cement trucks, and border telemetry. And along her gurgling rural banks, she offers neither resistance nor sustenance to butterflies or sparrows, crawdads or catfish, javelinas or humans or coyotes. She's impartial to the panting jackrabbits who hide by day and visit the river's damp bed by night oblivious to the people huddled in the brittle brush, hot sand burning swollen feet, hearts pounding against the shirts on their back as they're caught. Grew up near a river where green uniforms reach out, offer temporary relief, the sad certainty of capture bursting fragile dreams of happy endings, the chase over, hearts implode, Dry eyes look up, chapped mouths rasp. Oh, wow. Wow. Great. Thank you. I think that's enough from me, don't you? Well, if you like. Uh, we have someone who's up very late in Scotland. I'd like to introduce Joan Borland, a unique, creative human being in every way, I would say. 
And uh, okay, Joan, it's your turn. Hello, Belinda. How are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. Thank you. You look great. You look amazing. You look amazing. Hello, everybody else as well. Uh, well, as you know, I don't really put myself forward for publishing. And Border Beats is the best book I could ever have been published in for what I regard my sort of maiden voyage. But I actually did put a poem in 31 years ago. I was working as an editor for Harper Collins in uh, Scotland and a man who's very famous here because he wrote a small book called The Patter about Glaswegian colloquial slang that is now world famous. He actually kept, he kept bringing me things in and he said, put your poetry into that, put your poetry in it. I just didn't do it. So I actually did actually put one poem in. So this is the only other poem that I've got published apart from The Glorious Border Beats. It's not titled. It's a, it's a poem about, well, I love this guy, but he could annoy me. Don't you come huffily stubble to me with your overcoat depressions. Furrowed brows winking at the brim of a hat. You bore me with your hands deep in pockets, thoughts, hole in shoe shuffle with sad old seg sound. Your turn ups tell a tale of turn downs. You escape for a while through the neck of a good second hand shirt. Ritzy jackets, razzy ties, belted up trousers strain over circuit train thighs. You want to be in a boom town, baby? So go. And that's from Winter Anthology. That's the, the only other poem I've got published anywhere. I wasn't sure what the format of tonight would take, Melinda, and I've seen that other people have read a couple of poems. So would you read the, would you read the one from Border Beats, please? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because okay. uh, this is I was saving the best to last, Belinda. <laughs> I was going to do boom, 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 because I know you like it. Okay. This poem is about the borders in the mind that we all face. We all have walls between the different, you know, compartments that we don't want people to go into. We don't want to go into. Um, so this is called Mind Geography. I'll help you, friend or stranger, should I see you struggling in your pain. I'll recognize you need compassion. I'll give you the empathy you lack. I'll break down the walls around you. I'll see your mind is under attack. In the landscapes of anyone's mind, people can fall into head quicksand. No maps or compasses help people navigate any brain geography terrain. Weather comes to these landscapes. People battle with mind, limbs, lame. Separated from sanity, from sanity. Judgment put upon you, upon you. Separated from family, from family. That brings insanity to you. Family walls keep family truth in, truth in. High walls hide family sin family sin. The borders of all mind geography are many and their walls are high. Love will be your ladder of escape. Caring for others to who you relate helps break down others' jail walls. Ladders of escape jail break. People don't understand mind geography borderland. Not all jails are physical. Abuses causing mind jails are careless, cold, clinical. I ran from Scotland to England, an escape border I needed to cross. From pain, home border of insane, not knowing what it would cost. I had left family abuse behind, but in England, my borders were crossed. I went by train across the border, separating Scotland from England. I ran away from my Scottish home. I hoped in a new country a good life I'd find. Jailed by Scottish family who lied to a hospital to fence their secrets in. 
I climbed those hospital walls. My mind and flesh were torn, escaping false jail, not of my sin. My father built walls around me, hiding all with me he was doing. My mother and her complicity were scared I'd be his undoing. I repeated the pattern of taking partners the same as my father. I became pregnant to one. I ran to Barcelona. Travel was my armour. Crossing borders has been my life. Some crossings have been kind to me. I felt others cross borders and break through their mind and body walls. Those trapped, I will always try to set free. I will set free. I'm a rogue border patrol soul soldier. Yeah, that's what I am. I'm a rogue border patrol soul soldier. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for staying up for us. <laughs> Not at all. I set the alarm. I was just a little bit late. So I thought uh -huh. I could go. Okay. Liz Minette. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, let's see. I'll read my piece from uh, Border Border Beats. Um, just uh, recently had a poem published in Lost Lake Folk Opera out of um, a ma literary magazine out of Winona, Minnesota, where I went to college, Winona State. So that was really cool. It's um, pretty surreal. But anyway, um, I'll read my poem and then um, I'll read my friend uh, Delta Eddie's poem from Border Beats. Here's mine, it's called Border. Enclosure of the commons, an arbitrary line, a demarcation, Usually appropriation of a river, body of water. Show me your passport. Where are your papers? How did you get across? Enclosure of the commons and the people become displaced, forced to move across the starvation of democracy, equity. Even a river's an unwilling accomplice, an arbitrary line, border. Uh, and then my, uh, thank you. And then my friend uh, Delta Eddie's piece in, in Border Beats here, it's um, on page 86, it's called Ghost, West pa Paisano Drive, El Paso, Texas, 1978. Two days alone in the house, bed nearly empty, when a space kneels up in me and speaks. A fluctuation in the weak force, I can repeat what it says, but don't understand it. When I remember this moment, I always let the house take over. An adobe blockhouse on the Rio Grande, it was part of the old Fort Bliss. Great Mexican restaurant in the officer's quarters, but our hovel, I shared it with Ray Gonzalez, the poet, was a guardhouse or the gatekeeper's shack for the floodgate on the Rio right there. The road dead ended at the at the levee and a large percentage of the foot traffic across the river and up the hill to gardens and children passed by on the levee. One night a guy who'd fallen in woke us up. I gave him a dry shirt. And that was why the little bunker was surrounded by kennels and high fences with barbed wire, steel mesh over the back windows and bars over the one in front. The door was reinforced with brackets and pins that held four by fours to thwart push-ins, if we only had guns. A pomegranate bush deep green in the dusty front yard is a symbol. Poison husk full of red seeds, a reminder that, that, we, that we're all bound to return to our fell husband, or else hewn and scooped hollow its red seeds cool against the polished oak the voice of the specter is behind a desk writing. Only the ghost comes in and out, pushing curtains. He was watching the river, waiting for Pancho Villa, killed by a sniper, I like to think. He was instead the previous tenant robbed by transients soaked in the night. He pointed his gun at them and they shot him. Blood spot on the ceiling that rises through the, through the white paint. Or who the hell knows? 
One night, Ray in his room and me in mine both heard the unmistakable sound of the iron pins screeching up in the bracket and clanking down, one after another. This is the part I drag out when I tell it to children. But there was no other sound. Ray heard it. I heard it. Did you hear that? Yeah. Check it out, will you? Fuck you. I have taken down the beams and opened the door. A hundred degrees and the swamp cooler stopped working again. I have been completely alone for two days for the first time in my life. I step off the porch into the heat. I feel myself hurtling into the infinite as an impossible number of seeds, each infinitely alone. What holds a body together? The weak force surrenders and I dissipate in the sunlight. That's it. All right. Thank you so much uh, for reading uh, Delta Eddies also. Okay. All right. Uh, Chris Fanoy. Here I am. All right. Thank you for putting my poem first in the book, Belinda. It was a good I didn't think it, I didn't think it was that good of a poem, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you anyway. Uh, it's called uh, The Building, The Old Building Near Friendship Park. And Friendship Park was a uh, park that was dedicated by Ronald Reagan's wife uh, as a place on the border where everybody could meet and talk to each other on each side of the border. And uh, it has just been uh, torn down and another fence put up. <laughs> this is stupid. It, it was a nice place to meet people. The fence to the north side is where the cars idle in their long lines, belching fossil fuels that snake through the vendors selling trinkets, hats, food, and clothes. Stretched across the border, just south of the crossing, there's a second fence and a third fence between countries. This fence spells the ending of the Pacific Ocean, drowns its blue, drowns in its blue waves as if an artist had placed it there for its disappearing into the sea for a trans-border megalopolis between mountains and that be disappears between mountains and sea. La Migra flies in the sky with drones overhead in vigilance of a border that cannot be seen from space. Eastward, it stretches into rocks and desert, sagebrush and snakes. Many try and some find their way of getting through. Many only find the way by dying. I stand here on a hill in San Diego, looking from Golden Hills South, looking at the hills of, full of diamonds as I climb out of the slough in between the border of here and there. Sparkling in the night, Tijuana rises in a spray of diamonds in the night south of the border. A friendship fence disappears here, where the fence ends and the Pacific begins, where the diamonds of the city lights dance in the water, where hope swims around and sometimes drowns. Thank you very much. I'll okay. be doing, uh, huh? I'll be doing uh, some readings at uh, uh, St. Augustine, Florida in April and in September, hopefully in Dublin. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, up next, Robin Schofield. Hi, everybody. Hey. So that's funny. This is the second poem in the book in the the anthology, and um, it's from a a, a manuscript that uh, that has a little a character in it. And, and um, anyway, this is the character speaking. Hospitality. You never know when strangers might be angels. Therefore, always let them in. Don't let strangers die of thirst in your desert. They won't know the secret water holes you have mapped in your head as a treasure code. X marks the life you would give to strangers in order to make a friend in the lonely desert. 
understanding that they would do the same for you and show you the shade of the one tree and acacia hugging the ground, befriending the ants. The migrants in search of water let them in, either they're angels or they need one. Yeah, thank you, Belinda, for publishing that one. And um, I had a new book come out called Ridge of High Pressure from Mouthfeel Press. And I want to read just one out of it. Uh, it's a, uh, a short little poem about the border. And I refer to the Franklin Mountains as the Sierra de los Mansos because that's maybe close to the name of the indigenous tribe that was here. It's all we have left of them. Border crossings, border wall. Who can keep the great blue heron out of La Sierra de los Mansos? Who will see that the lynx can cross? Their dwindling number threatened already by the headlights of the border patrol jeeps, confusing them about night and day. Who will tell the gray wolf by the thinly flowing Rio Bravo that she can no longer cross. Her haunting howl stretches across the border to send a shiver down your spine, no matter which side of the river you're on. No one can keep out the ravens and crows. There are always plenty of fresh dead by the river, whether man or minnow. Don't try to swim across the dangerous, attractive canals. Call up the buzzards if you dare. They circle on thermals that rise from both sides of the valley, calm, serene, surveying the world for the dead no one else wants. Thank you very much. You. I'll I'll um I'll read uh, my piece. And um for some reason, I used to think it wasn't important to have books and all that. So for the, my first book in six years is coming out very soon from Roadside Press. Uh, actually, the same people that published Donna Snyder, George Wallace, and a bunch of other people. And I'm reading the proofs right now. So, and I've discovered recently that I've lost hundreds of poems. And when I find them in a magazine, I go, oh, like from 10 years ago, I, I forgot about that. So I need to publish so that I can remember what I've written. <laughs> All righty, um, 4 a.m. again and no sleep. I tried forest sounds, including a stream and an owl. I tried happy TV, traveling, remodeling, other animals and their habitats. I tried counting breaths and soft music. I tried acupressure and the mantra, be here now. I tried silence and the static was deafening. Pills aren't working. My reoccurring depression blossoms in a toxic reality. I tuned into World War III thinking avoiding it was not working. And that didn't work either. Over 6 million refugees from Ukraine have run for their lives. My heart races for them as my body slowly disintegrates. And the world as we know it explodes and burns. Annihilation, a possibility. Night is too dark for sleep. Okay, if Joan is still here, let me see if she's still here. Joan, since yes. she stayed up so late, <laughs> would, you like, would you like to do your boom boom piece? Yeah, I brought it specially for you. Wasn't sure what the format was gonna be. So I just need to find in amongst all this. Just wasn't sure. So, yeah, I got it. Okay. Right. Take it, everybody, just take it back a bit, your ears. <laughs> okay. A boom, boom, boom. Are your personal rockets 
still flying to the moon. Now, if yours are not, I wouldn't want to be messing with that. A boom, boom, boom. Is it still your cat with who you share your room? You're luckier than me. I have cat allergy. A boom, boom, boom. Do you still have family dinners, but with nae family? A boom, boom, boom. I can't even have Sunday dinners. A boom, boom, boom. You know I'm just trying to keep my heart beating. A boom, boom, boom. It's why I keep repeating. A boom, boom, boom. It's why I keep repeating. A boom, boom, boom. Where are you, universal love? A boom, boom, boom. Where are you, any kind of love? A boom, boom, boom. That's my heart, can you hear it? A boom, boom, boom. That's my heart, can you hear it? Why do you fear getting near it? I guess your fear blocks that move. A boom, boom, boom. I guess it's your chest move. A boom, boom, boom. A boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. boom, boom. Thank you, everybody. Um, Thank you. Really enjoyed spending a, a part of New Year's Eve Eve with you. Does anyone else have something they're burning to read? No, I just want to say that, you know, in addition to being really pleased to be in the anthology, thanks for making this space where we can all um, sort of make the anthology a audio audio piece as well so this was this has been a lot of fun well thank you very much Susie, yeah this was like very good to read you. though yeah yeah well i i like to have a, a general reading uh used to be about once a month i'll probably start that back again you know unless i get having bad times again i might not feel like it but but put, look into the gas group occasionally and uh i announce things there and uh, it's a public group, so some people will see it other places, like in their feed and all that. And I'm always open to new projects, new wild ideas. Not that it's so wild, though, but I do have some ideas. And I'm open to collaborations of different kinds. And um, I don't know. We'll keep in touch. Definitely. Right. Thank you again, Belinda. Bye-bye, everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. If I could just, just let me just say one thing before we uh, all say goodbye. I just want to mention that on Tuesday nights at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, I, I host uh, an open mic called uh, Time to Arrive. It's on Facebook. Uh, you know, you can find it there or you can find me if, you, if you'd like to come along, if you have uh, some time and you, you want to hear some other poets and, and read some of your work, uh, y'all please come. Yeah, Doc Janning is going to be the featured uh, poet this week, so that's going to be really fun. Uh, I'm really jealous now. I'm really jealous. Can you not put it in Zoom? <laughs> uh, well, Dan, Dan, would you uh, put that announcement on gas? That way I'll see it and I would like to tune in. Okay. Now and then, but I'm like oh. everybody else. Mm, there's so much going on. I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's always a good space, though. Yeah. Anybody else want to announce uh, maybe uh, Border Beats? Not Border Beats. I mean, uh, Tumble Words or some other reading series you have? Oh, yeah. Sometime in late January, on I think the last Saturday in January, I'm going to do a, a little workshop called Desert Music. Nice. For words. Oh. Wow. Okay. Oh, that great. sounds great. And all of you feel free to drop those announcements on the gas uh, group because it's it's another place where people will see it and, and maybe join in. Okay. Uh, yeah. I guess that's probably at 10. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank yeah, you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Belinda, really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.